One of the companies that has been highly requested for me to make a video on is Discover Financial Services, stock ticker DFS, currently trading at $96.75 per share. This is a pretty large company. If we come down here, you can see they have a market cap of over $26 billion, but year to date, like most financial companies, are down quite a bit, 18.45%. One of the problems with financial stocks currently is there's a whole lot of concern about the credit conditionings weaken and the overall market as a whole, but does that justify the large drop in their share price over the the past year. To figure that out, we're going to be jumping into one of my spreadsheets. And this is a tool that was designed for the sole purposes of valuing bank stocks and financial stocks. And you can see we have a whole lot of different ways to value stocks down here. We have different valuation models and other valuation metrics as well. And we have our stock screener here. So if you'd like to be able to download this spreadsheet, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. But let's go ahead and come up here and plug in the stock ticker and hit enter. And you can see all of this data is going to automatically load in. Obviously, we're looking at a 365 day change chart, so we can see a pretty drastic drop. If we come over here and look at the dividend data, we can see they're paying out $2.40 per share, which gives them a dividend yield of right at 2.5%. But the best part about that dividend yield is their payout ratio is so low, sitting at just at 14%. Now, the 20, 50, and 200 day moving averages are all down quite a bit as well. Analysts currently have a target price a bit higher than that current trading price at about $119 per share, but we can see they do have a pretty high beta, so you can expect to see some volatility within this stock. Also, it's worth noting pretty high institutional ownership, which is generally something that I like to see. But let's go ahead and jump into our first valuation model, which is going to be Graham's valuation. And this is a valuation model invented by Benjamin Graham in order to calculate intrinsic value. And here's the formula he lays out for us. So you can see the first thing we need is our earnings per share, which is listed automatically right here. And then we apply our growth rate projections for the lifetime of this company. And you can see I'm projecting a relatively conservative growth rate for this company. A lot of analysts actually do have a higher growth rate than this. Then we multiply that by 4.4, which is the average yield of AAA corporate bonds, and divide by Y, which is the current yield on AAA corporate bonds. And at the time of this video, it is sitting at 4.54. But when we plug all of those in, you can see we come to an intrinsic value of $193.65 per share. That is quite a bit above that current trading price. So that is a good sign. Let's go ahead and keep moving forward. And the next thing we want to look at is the historical price to tangible book value for this company. So tangible book value is a great way to value financial stocks. So essentially what we're doing is we're looking at the share price over the past decade and the current share price. And we're also looking at the tangible book value per share over that time period as well and the current tangible book value per share. And once we have all that, we can see our historical price to tangible book value, which I think is a relatively good valuation metric for a lot of financial companies. And something you'll notice is you can see for the lifetime of this company, it's been sitting around 2.36 as we can see right here to the upper 2.76. Now the current price to tangible book value is sitting at 2.04. So that means it's the lowest it's been in the past decade. To me, that is a huge sign that this company is potentially undervalued. This is a really big indicator that we should be looking closer at this company. But let's go ahead and keep moving forward and look at our multiples valuation. And essentially what we're doing with our multiples valuation is we're looking at companies that are similar in structure to this company, taking their stock price, dividing by the earnings per share to get their price to earnings multiple. Once we've done that, we take the average price to earnings multiple, multiply it by DFS's earnings per share to come to an intrinsic value of about $70 per share. Now that is a bit lower than the current trading price for this company, but something whenever we do this with a financial stock is we want to see if that's justified by looking at their ROAs as well. So we're looking at these same companies that we just looked at. We're looking at their ROA and something we will notice is that DFS has a much higher ROA than these comparable companies. So to me, I think you could make the argument that it's just justify that they trade at a higher price to earnings multiple than some of their competitors. Now, the last valuation model that we are going to look at is the dividend discount model. This is one of my favorite ways to value dividend paying stocks because it values them based on how much they pay out in dividends and also more importantly, how much that dividend is going to increase over time. So you can see right here, I plug in the quarterly dividend payouts for this company so we can see how much they pay out each year. And this allows us to see our year over year growth rates. And they've done a really good job. We can see 10% here. They didn't grow it in 2020, but a year ago is a growth rate of 13.64%. And most recently, a dividend growth rate of 20%. That is an extremely high dividend growth rate. So over that time period, that's an average growth rate of right at 11%. Moving forward, I'm projecting a growth rate of about 6.5%, a discount rate of 8.5%. And when we get the intrinsic value, it comes out to $127.80 per share. So even though they do have a somewhat low starting dividend yield at about 2.5%, when you combine that low payout ratio and their commitment to increasing the amount they pay in dividends, we still get a really high 
um, dividend discount model as we can see right here. Now, the last thing we do want to glance at is the assets under management growth. And this isn't something that gives us an intrinsic value per se, but I think it is important that we want to see growing assets under management. And in this scenario, we can see the five-year compounded annual growth rate is about 2%. So I do typically like to see it higher. But when you look at analyst projections for growth for this company, I don't think this is any concern whatsoever. So when we jump over to the output tab, we can see our three valuations, grams at 193, multiples at about 70. But I think you could argue that it is justified that they do trade at a higher multiple due to the fact their ROA is so much higher and the dividend discount model at 127.8. Now we also need to make note of the current price to tangible book value sitting at the lowest it's been at a decade and decent assets under management at about 2%. But when we average these three together, we come to an intrinsic value of $130.46 per share. Now as value dividend investors, we always want to apply a margin of safety. So let's say in this scenario, we apply a 20% margin of safety and hit enter. Based upon this, we come to an acceptable buy price of $104.37 per share, meaning now may be a good time to consider buying this stock. So as for me personally, I do already have a lot of my capital invested into financial companies, as you'll see in my coming monthly dividend portfolio update. So I'm trying not to focus too much on adding capital into those positions, but when I researched this company, I just thought there was too much to like. So it is on my watch list and it's likely that I will be adding shares in the near future. But there you go. There's an analysis on Discover Financial. Go ahead and let me know what you think of this company in the comments down below. If you'd like to be able to download this spreadsheet, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. So that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.